Tensei Monk, the Weapon Monk, the Karate Samurai, the monk who is the master of the blade. The Kensei is meant to fulfill the fantasy of being a warrior who fights not only with a blade, but also with their fists. Unfortunately, it kind of fails at that. So what are these issues and how do we fix them? To do that, we should probably understand what a Kensei is first. Wikipedia doesn't give us much here, but it does tell us that Kensei means sword saint, and it's an honorary title. The most famous guy to hold this title was, and excuse my pronunciation, Miyamoto Musashi. He won 61 sword duels. I also see here he was late for one of his most notable duels because he overslept. When he did arrive, hours after the appointed time of the duel, he proceeded to smack talk his opponent and kill him in the most anime way I have ever read in a historical account. He didn't bathe himself while he was growing up because he didn't want to be surprised while unarmed. He rejected the <clears throat> naughty advances of women so he could focus on his swordsmanship. I'm not a credible historian, but I think it's more likely these women didn't want to be around him because he never took a shower? <laughs> While you were talking to women and showering, I was studying the blade. Knowing all of that, I think I'm just going to focus on the good with a sword bit. Sorry to all the people looking forward to smelly virgin, Monk. You'll have to keep waiting for that one. Okay, enough with the history lesson. Let's start with level three. But before we get into this monk that uses weapons, I need to tell you the best weapon to protect your data from the dark web and the sponsor of this video, Aura. Guys, I like my privacy. I like being a mystery wrapped in an enigma. So when I see companies like AT&T had a data breach that leaked 73 million customer records, including names, dates of birth, and social security numbers, I'm not super jazzed about that. And it isn't just companies leaking your data to bad actors on the dark web. It's data brokers that take your info and sell it to either hackers or people who bombard you with spam. But Aura eases my mind. It scours the web for anyone who may have my information and shows me which data brokers are selling my info and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, my bank account, my Toontown account, all the things that are important to me. It can also scan your computer for malware and viruses, all in the same app, which is easy and convenient. If you want to keep your sensitive information safe, go to aura.com forward slash bone wizard to start your two week free trial. The link is in the description. And thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. This is a monk who unfortunately is having an identity crisis. I'll explain why by explaining their level three feature, Path of the Kensei. It makes you proficient in calligraphy or painter's tools, deal more damage with ranged weapons for some reason, and most importantly, it makes you proficient in any martial weapon that lacks the heavy and special property, which I already gave them at level one in my monk video, so that makes this a little less cool, but that's not important. We're here for the cool moves you can do with your weapon, and it gives you Agile Parry, which temporarily gives you plus two AC when you punch as part of your attack action. And there are no cool sword abilities the Sword Saint subclass gives you at level three. Where are my cool sword moves, Sword Saint? I know you didn't leave them in the bathtub, so where are they? Nothing is encouraging you to actually use your Kensei weapon. It's only encouraging you to hold one. Is that what it means to be a master swordsman? If I use a bazooka to destroy 100 dragons, but I'm holding a katana I bought at the mall while I do it, does that make me a master swordsman? Why attack with a sword when the subclass is rewarding me to punch? Agile Parry discourages you from attacking with your weapons, weapons that this subclass claims you have mastered. The weapon does does more damage than your fist, yes, but shouldn't I be able to do something cool as the proclaimed Saint of Sword? Kensei's sword skills are lesser than any level one fighter, paladin, ranger, and barbarian. So Agile Parry is encouraging the sword-themed class to punch by giving them a temporary plus two AC. You know what class does that better than Kensei does? Literally any class with armor or shield proficiency. And that increased AC you get from wearing armor doesn't have any fist related requirements to it either. These guys don't have to sacrifice dealing less damage to get that AC increase. Why is the focus to only hold the sword and not use it? The sword saint is better with a paintbrush than a sword. I don't care how historically accurate it is, give me something to do with the sword. You know what, I'm gonna go challenge Van Gogh to an art contest. Let's see who the better artist is. Oops, I socked you in the mouth and knocked off your jaw, but I was holding a paintbrush while doing it. I guess that makes me the better painter, you one-eared bitch. So to fix this, we need to make this monk good with a sword, but not totally abandon what makes a monk special in the first place. This subclass should be a glorious combination of sword swings and punches, not a rejection of either. If you want to use a sword and never punch, 
then why not just play a fighter, a barbarian, or a rogue? Those options exist. There's even a samurai themed fighter, which is pretty similar in theme to Kensei. For this video, we are buffing Kensei so it encourages the player to attack with their fists and their weapons. So for their level three feature, we keep agile parry, add a bit of scaling as you level up, and add two more bits of text to incentivize using your weapon. First is agile strike. Spend one key to attack with your Kensei weapon as a bonus action. And if you spent key during your action, you can make one attack with an unarmed strike or Kensei weapon as a bonus action before the start of your next turn. That last bit is just key fueled attack, but the main point to focus on is using your bonus action to attack with a weapon. On its own, this ability is not exactly good. It generally does less damage than a flurry of blows, so why use it? This is why. Helm Splitter. When you hit the same creature with a weapon twice on your turn, the next attack that is made before the beginning of your next turn against that creature is made with advantage and takes extra damage equal to your wisdom modifier. The way I envision this is that your Kensei goes for the vital part of the body, like the head, with two big strikes. If they land, your enemy is very frazzled and the Kensei or an ally seizes on that panic to get a clean hit in. They use strategy and overwhelming force to put their enemy in a position to mess up, and then the Kensei capitalizes on it. And by capitalizes on it, I mean emptying out the contents of their skull. Now we have incentive for both attacking with a weapon and unarmed attacks. Do you want to tank up and take less damage from the very angry bear? Then use your action to kick him in the good berries and raise that AC. Or you could throw safety to the wind, attack with your sword twice, and give the fighter a better chance to turn this bear into a rug. This gets even better when you get extra attack because then, if you hit with both your sword attacks, you can spend a key point to whack him again with your weapon with advantage, or or spend zero key to bonus action punch with advantage. Or if you attack twice, hit with one attack, miss with the other. You can just spend it. Go for the bonus action attack and try to set something up for your fighter friend. Oh, excuse me, he's not a fighter, he's holding a trombone, which must mean he's a Grammy award winning musician. One thing we're gonna do is get rid of the Kensei weapon bit. Dedicated Weapon is doing the exact same thing at level 1, giving you proficiency in most weapons of your choosing. You could change this to just giving them a proficiency in longbows, but like, who is playing this subclass to be an archer, you know? Also, if there is a feature this subclass gets that says you have to use your Kensei weapon, just change it so it works on any weapon the monk is using. So if you found something like a cannon, I guess your features would work with that too. Also, we're getting rid of Kensei shot. The main reason being, this is already a lot for level three, and I added like two more abilities. We gotta tone it down. Your character sheet should only have so much text on it at level three. Cuts needed to be made. Plus people want this to be the cool melee weapon monk, not the archer monk. Helm splitter and agile strike can work with any weapon, not just a sword, including a longbow. You could still be a ranged monk with these changes. I mean, I'd rather a more interesting ranged monk like sun soul or dragon monk. I buffed them by the way, check out those videos if you haven't seen them, plug plug. I'm making this for the people who want to play a kung fu weapon master, not for the people who want Robin Hood. If you want to keep these features, then do that. Personally, I just think it's way too much to have all of this for level three. Level six. Level six gives us one with the blade and makes attacks with your Kensei weapon count as magical for overcoming resistances. Level six also gives us Death Strike, which is effectively just a Paladin Smite. It lets you spend key to add on more damage to your weapon attacks. Buddhist Paladin which is cool, but we could make it cooler. You're only allowed to use this ability once per turn, but what if we just got rid of that restriction? Paladins can smite any time to hit a creature with no restrictions, and it's so fun to just unload Heaven's Wrath onto the enemy. I think the one D&D playtest is changing it so that Paladins can only smite once per turn. I can understand why the designers would want to limit how many times you can make an enemy explode in one turn, but it's so fun. I get to roll all these dice and turn the non-believers into rats. Agu is great, I love it. So let's take the restriction off Death Strike. If players want to absolutely blow through their resource load, let them. They might have absolutely destroyed that bear, but may have wished they saved some juice for the fight with the Death Knight. Oh, excuse me, that's not a death knight. He's holding a bowling ball, so he must be the world's greatest bowler. Since we put in Helm Splitter, this class really wants to land their hits to get a big payoff, so they will most likely be using the Focused Aim feature Base Monk gets. Focused Aim lets you spend key to increase the attack roll bonus for a single attack. It will be very helpful for our Kensei, so let's lean into that. When you use your Focused Aim feature and successfully hit a creature, you may use your Death Strike ability without the need to spend 
key point. So now you can join the paladin in making people flavored pasta sauce. Level 11. Level 11 gives us Sharpen the Blade, which lets you make any non-magical weapon into a plus one, two, or three weapon. Pretty cool, right? Nope, it's awful. It only works on non-magic weapons. This is at level 11. You will most likely have a magic weapon at this point, and this ability incentivizes you to just not use the cool magic sword you found on your journey. I have the Crucible Sword from Doom Eternal, and you are telling me that to use my 11th level ability, I can't use this cool new sword. Why in the maker's name would I ever do that? This ability gives you two terrible options. Either don't use the cool magical weapons you got so far, Far to use this ability or use your magical weapons and miss out on a subclass ability at level 11. I'm feeling less like the undefeated sword Satan, more like the stinky virgin, my guy. There are so many abilities and spells that have stupid relationships with magical and non-magical weapons, but that's a topic for another time. Anyway, Kensei. It's really easy to fix Sharpen the Blade. You can use it on a magic weapon 2 to a maximum of plus 3. So, if you have a plus 1 weapon, you can spend 2 key to make it a plus 3 weapon. The higher bonus your magic weapon has, the cheaper your upgrade will be. Now remember, if you're using the monk I made in this video, you have improved dedicated weapon, meaning your unarmed attacks will also get any bonuses you put into your sword. So not only did you make a plus 3 sword, your fists will also be plus 3. Everyone knows you gotta keep those fists sharp. Also, so, like I said earlier, we are going to remove that it can only be used on Kensei weapons and say it can work on any weapon. It can still only work on one weapon at a time, but if you got a super strong magic sword and your buddy has a weaker one, you can give his sword magic steroids to make it better. Before we get to level 17, I want to point out something I missed in my base monk video. I increased their martial arts die to a d12 and gave them the ability to make a long sword a monk weapon, a weapon that deals 1d10 damage. I want to make an addendum in this video video because it affects Kensei the most, I made one more effect for the base monk's martial arts ability. If your monk weapon has a smaller damage die than your martial arts die, and it's a melee weapon, you may use your martial arts die instead. I do like the idea of a monk getting even more powerful than a sword, and I designed my monk around that, but I also recognize some players want to punch as well as use their weapons. It's really just there to add flavor and let players play how they want to. If you disagree with that change, fine, don't give it to the monk, but at least give it to Kensei. At level 17, their fists will be stronger than a longsword, and they shouldn't be punished for playing into the themes or mechanics of their subclass. Before we go any further, if you are enjoying the video or these buffs to Kensei, consider liking the video, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Like, you could just slap your keyboard and that would be fine. That still appeases the confusing YouTube algorithm. I try and respond to as many comments as I can, yes, even the slap comments. All that stuff has tangibly helped me. Like, I got a sponsor now, that is nuts. And consider looking at the Patreon to playtest stuff for these videos, like Ranger. Whatever you do, I just want you to know it is extremely appreciated and thank you. Moving on to... Level 17 gives us unerring accuracy. Once per turn, you can reroll an attack made with a monk weapon if you miss. This mother don't miss. Which is a pretty good ability, but we do have to compare that to the other level 17 monk subclass abilities, which can make you explode and create a 60 foot AoE lightning punch, raise people from the dead, and execute people with the slap of death. You know, uh, Kensei's, Kensei's slacking a little bit here, so we, we gotta do something. Firstly, we will change this to work on all attack rolls, not just weapon attack rolls. Now, you can re-roll weapon attacks and unarmed attacks. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. So what ability can we give to make them a peerless warrior? Boys? Statistically, boys, there are a few girls here. I got a really fun one. We are going to introduce Helm Splitter's bigger and scarier older brother, Brutal Helm Splitter. At 17th level, when you or an ally attack a creature with the aid of your Helm Splitter ability, the attacker may forego rolling with any and all forms of advantage and roll normally on their attack roll. If they hit, they score a critical hit and deal extra damage equal to two times your wisdom modifier. If the attack rolled high enough to score a critical hit normally, roll one additional damage die when determining the extra damage. This move will make your enemy's jaw and brains drop to the floor. This is why I play D&D. Risk and reward. Cool thing about this is if you roll high enough, you don't need to spend a single key point to use it, unlike the other level 17 monk subclass abilities. 
Well, most of them, anyway. And even if you get rid of your advantage, you still have three ways to increase your chances to hit. Sharpen the blade, focused aim, unerring accuracy. Unerring accuracy is not advantage. It's a reroll if you miss, so it still works. And keep in mind, if you death strike on a critical hit, that die for death strike also gets doubled, so you can just pile on damage. That's 4d12 plus dex on a crit. And keep in mind, this is level 17. There's a very good chance you have some magical weapon that adds another damage die onto the attack. So that's another thing that gets doubled. I feel bad for emptying your skull earlier. Here, I'll fill it with all these dice. Your skull is now my dice tray. Also, there's a reason I called this brutal helm splitter. It's to remind any barbarian players if they land a brutal helm splitter, it will trigger their brutal critical. Also, I changed brutal critical to this. It increases their crit chance as they level up as well as increasing the damage to a crit. All the changes I made to any class are on the Google Doc. The link is in the description, so check it out. When a barbarian gets a crit with brutal helm splitter, it goes from dropping their jaw to the floor to their entire body exploding like a bloody mess in Fallout. With all these changes, Kensei is no longer a stinky, sleepy virgin. They are the person who could win 61 duels and go down in history as a legend. Shout out to the patrons, Panko6, Beefmaster, All for Pog, BuddyB31, Christopher Cook, Fusro Dog, Hayden Testhammer, James Spear, Manifestoring, Poggers Extreme, Swampy McGee, Volum, Zakilu, and Zethius. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you.